Welcome to Witchy Business, hosted by me, Emily. And me, Anna. This is your weekly dose of friendly business chat with a witchy flair. Through these personal and vulnerable conversations, we share our business journey with you. Highlighting the links to our overall growth journey in the hopes to make you feel more supported as you share your magic. This episode is sponsored by Plan Her, a timeless and undated planner and journal created to help witches stay organized while in flow. We especially love the pages for new moon manifestations and full moon reflections. For additional support on how to harness the energy of the moon while working on your business, subscribe to our Substack. Your link in our show notes. Hello, welcome to a new episode. Um, we have, I was about to say, a really special guest, and this is literally every episode with a guest. We're like, we have a really special guest. So that's just going to become our thing. Every guest yeah. is super special. Um, we have Maria today from Be Conscious PR, who joins us to chat about what it's like to create and run a conscious business, how she got into doing her own conscious business coming from a purely PR background we chat about human design about EFT tapping um, talk about Gen Z versus us as millennials (laughs) we chat about so much and I hope you love this episode as much as we loved recording it um We've put all of Maria's info in our show notes, so make sure to go and check her out and chat with her if you'd like. And yeah, let's get into it. Hello. Hi, Maria. Welcome to Witchy Business. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. So good to have you on. Just for everyone, we were talking just before we pressed record, and um, Em doesn't want to do the intros with guests anymore because of the jazz hands <laughs> moment. <laughs> Listen to episode nine if you don't know what I'm talking about. I just can't <laughs> stop the jazz hands; just wants to come out. <laughs> no, it's like when we press record, it's like hello, <laughs> big happy moment. Mm. It does feel like a big moment moment when that yeah. the record button. It's so formal, like, okay, it's okay, happening. We're Let's here. go. All right. <laughs> yeah. I think if we had just started recording like right from the start, there wouldn't there wouldn't be a need for that. It's like it's the pressure of the like red button, you know. And we're on. Yeah. yeah. We are <laughs> Three, millennials after two, all. One, <laughs> record. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um all right well Maria can you please introduce yourself however you wish of course um so yeah I'm Maria I am a PR coach a conscious PR coach um a tapping practitioner and a yoga teacher and I get to combine all of those things into really empowering conscious entrepreneurs to be seen and show up authentically and really make the impact that they're here to make um which is really beautiful and special work um and I live in Lisbon and normally the sun is shining and today it's actually feeling it's actually really rainy and cloudy and I feel like maybe this is like sympathy weather because I'm talking to <laughs> people in northern Europe where it's like maybe not as weather weather is not as nice um but yeah that's me in a nutshell I guess but we'll get more into more about what I'm all about but um that's me yeah what does conscious can you describe what mm. conscious entrepreneurship and, and conscious PR means? Mm. Good question, because I feel like it's always like an evolving definition um, the longer I stay in conscious business. But I guess I would define conscious PR as like my, because my issue with the PR industry, having had my background there, like over 10 years of experience, is that I found it can be really performative. Um, it could be this strategy that you use to put like a positive spin on things or to like Mm -hmm. say what you think people want to hear and actually it's not really shining a light on what you're actually doing um and so conscious PR to me is when it's actually happening from the inside out instead of the outside in it's like it's really amplifying what is already there what already sets you apart and it's coming from this place of integrity and really amplifying that and then that allowing you to attract your people Um, And what I also always say is that it's like PR is about kind of taking control or taking ownership of how you're perceived by the public. 
And conscious PR is when perspective, perception and reality actually line up, which shouldn't be groundbreaking. Mm, I love that. But it is mm -hmm. <laughs> in a world where there's a lot of like performance and, you know, green washing, rainbow washing, pink washing, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, because the world is shifting. It is becoming more conscious. And so brands have realized that they have to do, they have to be mm -hmm. conscious. But a lot of the time, it's not necessarily rooted in integrity. And conscious PR is rooted in that integrity. Um. And when it comes to conscious business, that I feel like is an even more evolving definition because there's so many ways to be conscious. Um, but I guess it's, it's business owners who are here to make a positive impact. They're here to add value in some way. And it's not purely motivated by money. Although I do believe that running a business that does good things in the world and being successful are not mutually exclusive. I think, again, we're shifting and like we get mm -hmm. to have both and we should be compensated for doing good things in the world. Um, and it's also something that I've talked more recently about with clients is like, it's not just in like what you do for other people. It's also how you operate your business, which mm -hmm. I know we're going to get into. It's like, it's also being conscious of like, are you hustling? Are you like denying your emotions? Are you like operating in a way that's actually not very supportive of your energy and your needs and your well being? Like that's also, that's also part of being conscious is also the way you operate as much as it is what you do yeah mm. yeah yeah it's like filling your cup first as well before like mm -hmm. you can't pour from an empty cup right um yeah yeah I think that's so important and that's something that personally I'm really passionate about and that Em and I are too and this is why witchy business exists is this whole piece of how important it is not only like what you do and like what your business is, but how the whole energetical piece of when you're working in your business and on your business, you know, like, like you said, are you hustling? What's the place that you're coming from? Are you pushing, you know, too much? Are, are you coming from this place of like lack and need or, or are you able to be with yourself? Because running a conscious business, I mean, the mirror that it is to... <laughs> everything that you still have to work on and I mean it's a never-ending thing but I just find that it's just yeah this big mirror of like oh you thought you had worked through this let's it's let's so just bring true. it up for you and see it's if you so can true. really be with it you know it's um, like a spiritual journey that you didn't realize mm. you before when you yeah. choose to run a conscious business yeah. yeah yeah it really is because and you can't like bypass your own stuff you know you you catch yourself like I know for me you catch yourself like talking to a client and saying something and you're like oh if I'm really in integrity I need to go watch that for myself in my business because that's all well and good in my private life but maybe in my business that still needs to be like addressed and refined a little bit yeah it's an embodiment piece I think mm. also which is such yeah. a practice it's not about like you have to do everything perfectly, but it's just like checking in with yourself regularly being like, yeah. am I embodying what I'm mm -hmm. putting out there? You know, um, yeah. I'm advising other people to run their businesses consciously and show up consciously. It's like, am I doing that? And it's not about yeah. like shaming or whatever. It's just like mm -hmm. a little check-in, It's just a check in. Yeah. Like, how am I holding myself back or how mm -hmm. am I maybe following in, into some old conditioning of what it looks like to be an entrepreneur or what it looks like to be in business? Because that's all the way we've been taught to operate is very much like lack and hustle and you know denying yourself and having to earn rest and all this stuff yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> you're like yes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I could talk about this for days <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and um so with that like I mean we've spoken before and I know you use like EFT that is something that you practice but you use that in your business and I'm like, yeah, can you talk to us a little bit more about that using? I mean, honestly, EFT, I guess for, for anyone listening, if you've not heard of EFT, it stands for emotional mm. freedom technique. Um, it's also known as tapping because what you do is you quite literally tap acupuncture points on your body. So you're, you're working the energetic meridians in your body. Um, and what that does is it, is it allows you to clear out stuck emotions, um, but it also has been proven to literally rewire your brain so you can also release limiting beliefs and inject like ones that serve you better. Um, so it's a really supportive tool if you're finding, you know, emotions coming up um, or thoughts coming up that 
sometimes it's just hard to like think your way out of it actively. It's nice to have a tool that kind of like can shift it for you um, on an energetic level. Um, so that's essentially what EFT tapping is. It's also known as a stress reduction technique because it does lower your cortisol. So like what it's doing is it's interrupting the stress response you're having to something difficult. And then that's what allows you to move out of it. Um, and it's so, I mean, it's so supportive. Like I've been tapping since 2019. So since around the time I started to get the idea to launch my business. So it's been a part of my personal practice since launching my business. And I don't think I really realized until I certified like how much of a support it's been. And it's always, that's, I feel like that's always the way you just like take this thing for granted. And you're like, wait, this is actually really helpful. And I should, you know, share it with other people. Um, and so I tap all the time and I get to now bring that in as a, another piece of support for the mindset stuff and the emotional stuff, because that is, again, that's part of running a conscious business is having that awareness of the whole holistic approach. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just strategy. And what I end up realizing is that most of the time, the strategy is like the easiest part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the hard part is like holding your vision, holding space for all of the emotions that are coming up, all the triggers that are coming up as you're doing new things and putting yourself out there and allowing yourself to be seen and, that's really, I feel like where a lot of the work is. And I, I realize the longer I mm -hmm. stay in my business that like, that is really what I'm here to help people with. It's like people come to me for PR and then they realize that I'm gonna really help them heal some shit. <laughs> like I wouldn't have it any other way because that's, that's how I operate too. Like that's mm -hmm. what my business is doing for me. Yeah, I feel like that really ties in so like they they just go hand in hand like PR and because when your PR is like showing yourself right it's like being seen so I can imagine like so many of your clients do like they they think it's like PR but then it's like oh okay now now I have to deal with all of this stuff so mm. that's amazing that you can combine those two yeah, exactly. Yeah. Visibility. It's like, it's a scary thing. And mm. I feel like it's okay to normalize that because having worked in agencies and stuff like that, you know, you work with founders and you get them on TV and all these things, but like, there's no really conversation there. there we don't really allow that support about like, okay, maybe they are a little bit nervous. And like, that's yeah. you know, just this expectation of like, oh, I got you the opportunity. It's amazing. Just like go and smash it. It's like, yeah, yeah. it's intimidating. Mm. Um, and then especially if you add that layer of conscious, you know, like, yes. oh, I'm not just, I'm not just like regurgitating some like rehearsed messaging. Like, no, 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 this is really coming from my heart. Mm -hmm. I think that adds a layer of like, you know, maybe just like intensity to the experience. So this is not to like scare people because it's also really empowering and feels really good, yeah. but it's, it's like normalize that it's, it's okay that for it to feel a little bit scary and new and like an edge that you're kind of leaning mm. in, um, yeah, there's that layer of vulnerability there that is, I mean, I could market NPR hotels for days and it doesn't affect me. It's not me that I'm putting out there, you know, like in my old career when that's what I was working on. It's a building and it's a business and it's the, you know, the ethos and all the values and mission of that business. And it's so separate from you. And then suddenly you have to do it for yourself, for something that you have experienced and truly believed in and believe in and live and breathe every day that's a whole different ball game to then go and talk about it and PR it market it just show up because what you're then talking about is you mm -hmm. you know you're not and selling feels, like it's like it's yeah it's much mm -hmm. more tender it feels mm -hmm. like there's more on the line and I, oh, I really absolutely yeah that like firsthand also when I launched my business because I've like been in PR for so long but I realized I was like well, I had the privilege of like hiding behind my clients. Like, yeah, I was talking to the journalists and getting people out there, but it was like never my name anywhere. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, it like it gave me like an insight into like what it's like. And so now that's kind of what I've been, I guess, embodying also. It's yeah. like I also like I also am regularly challenged by these like new edges I'm leaning into and and sharing more of myself and being more vulnerable. Um, so it's like, it's a, it's really a practice. Um, mm. It wasn't until I started having to PR myself that I like fully realized that scope um, and the vulnerability. But I also have experienced just how impactful it is. Like it's so magnetic 
And I, I mean, I know that that's a word that gets tossed around a lot in the coaching space, but it really like, it really is like just the other day I met with someone and it was like, I didn't even know she'd been following me and reading my stuff and reading my articles and things like that. And like the way she just saw me and was bought into me and already just like got everything I was about was, it was so powerful. I was like, Whoa, like this person is like, she's like on, she's fully bought in mm. and fully appreciates me. And it's like, that's what you then get because when you, when you actually dare to be authentic, it's like, it acts like this filter. It's like, people will like love you or they're like, not for me. Mm. Instead of trying to be like in the middle ground where you're kind of like likable to everyone, but then you're also not really memorable. It's like, it's not really. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're not showing up authentically as, as who you really are, then what people are seeing and reading is not you. So then they don't get you. And then that adds like a whole other layer to it. Right. So like it's being vulnerable. It's having the courage to show up authentically as you and then. PR kind of helps elevate that and grow your brand yeah all, what I always say is like PR really just amplifies what is mm. you know because people say like oh is there, there's no such thing as bad publicity or whatever and it's like I think a separate conversation but it's like what I I guess I talk to people about and why I think it's so important important to come from that place of integrity is because it, it's really like it's a neutral thing it just it amplifies what is mm. you know yeah um and so if you are in integrity and you're showing up authentically like it's going to amplify that yeah. it's really just like grabbing a megaphone mm. and also yeah. the people who say there's no such thing as publicity have never handled the pr crisis <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what i also but what, again what's interesting is like with having dealt with like the crisis communication side like in-house at mm. a at a big company what I find like actually when I'm teaching it now is I don't actually call it crisis communication because I realize if you're someone who comes from a place of integrity and you know why you're doing what you're doing and you've really like taken the time to sit with all those things and like to to also understand potential issues like that's part of it it's like it's not yes. about like, being anxious or whatever but it's just going like okay what are potential issues I could encounter based on what I do like okay for example if you're like I do tapping. It's an, it's an alternative to therapy. It's an alternative healing modality, but I'm not a therapist. So I'm like, okay, a potential issue I could run into is someone being like, you're not a therapist. You shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. And what I then teach my clients is like, well, that's okay. As long as you are open and honest, being like, I am not a therapist. And if something comes up that feels out of my scope, I will advise the person I'm working with to go and seek a therapist. And I make it clear from day one that I am not a therapist. I am not mm -hmm. a stand in for that. And then it's like, someone can still disagree. Someone can still be, like think that that's not okay. But I'm coming from this place of like, I know why I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm not hiding anything. I'm not trying to put a positive spin on something. And then I'm like, then it's not a crisis. Then it's just like, mm -hmm. and it's just like, I don't it know. Just is. And managing yeah. an issue. Yeah. Like it's yeah. it's responding to maybe a diff, like a, a challenging comment or yeah, it's just an opportunity for you to reiterate where you stand and to like kind of anchor back into that integrity mm. and just I feel honest. like I really needed to hear that right now mm. <laughs> like because yeah I mean there's the there's the like the piece about I guess um well like what you're qualified for right and and what you um and how you present but then also it's like opinions too and for me that's something that I have really struggled with and and still do occasionally it's like I know that I have my qualifications and I have my skills and strengths in certain areas but then sharing the opinion piece is for me it's like different or you know it's 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 what it's it's how do I put it it's like everything that you just said it's like if you kind of <clears throat> own that and you are a open to knowing what you don't know you know then then it's okay like it, it's it's so fine we're learning we're growing yeah exactly and I think that's why it's like it's about giving people permission and then like especially because I work with conscious people like it'd be one thing if I'm working with people who are not you know but yeah I feel like yeah confident giving people like that permission slip to be like well if someone were to come to you with an issue that you hadn't thought of 
you are conscious and self-aware enough to be like, you know what? Thank you. Like I hadn't thought about that. I'm going to go away and I'm going to think about it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe, maybe that means you actually change how you operate or you put yeah. certain implement something, but it's like that, 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 I mean, if you go from like the whole crisis communication, like strategy, like that's what they would say. It's like be human take action, you know, all these things. But it's like, if you're actually a conscious human, it's like, that's just how you would normally respond yeah. to something like that, yeah. that you didn't yeah. realize. You'd be like, you know what? I am I fully own that I hadn't thought about that. And I'm so grateful that you brought that to my attention. And now I'm going to take action and implement it. Here's what I'm doing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's like giving yeah. yourself permission to be human um, and just own isn't, it. I, isn't that like a strange sentence to say? Like you can tell we come yeah. from corporate background yeah, when, yeah. when this comes like, Step one, be human. And you're I know, just like, I is know. there any other way to be? Yeah. Because like, it's so I, so good. you know, and it's, that's to me, and that sentence, I mean, I've heard it a million times, I'm sure, Em as well, like the three of us come from like similar backgrounds in communications, PR, marketing. And yeah, the whole like, step one be human you're just like wow how disconnected is the industry that that is actually like a written step one because for people who you know had normal jobs where we didn't have to remind you to be a human being <laughs> in crisis comms that is lit like I remember seeing it mm -hmm. it's like step one and like you get this folder of like crisis communication this is what you do step mm -hmm. one come from like a human place or be human you're just yeah. like what? it's so it's so as wild. opposed to what like how else yeah. is anybody meant to function but we're so hidden behind all those layers of like the business the business the business we talk for the business the company that and that's mean, what I mean when it when it's the disconnect is huge. Yeah. When it's coming yeah. from the outside in. Yeah. Like, oh, this is like this is the approved messaging. Mm. And I think it is important to like, you know, be intentional with your messaging and think about mm. it so that it's consistent and all that stuff and apply all the strategy. But it's when it's so outside in that like you have to be reminded to be human that you're like, hey, hold up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's happening here? This is public <laughs> relations. This is building relationships with the public. Of course there's gonna be a human element. Yeah. You know? Yeah that's how conditioned we are and it's, and that's why yeah. it is scary showing up you know and and being seen because if you if you do come from that that background and then you you start a business it's it's like well it's that un unlearning piece isn't it you have to unlearn everything and relearn how to be a human again um yeah. but yeah. I saw you you shared something recently um about how you met a journalist um and you we're talking about how there is a human behind the email that you're pitching to and they want to hear human stories and human <laughs> pictures it was like it was exactly about that so no but it's so yeah. true and like I actually get that feedback often from like clients or like when they pitched journalists too like one of my clients recently in my last group she pitched a journalist and the journalist sent her an email back being like thank you so much for this email. Like I can really feel like she took the time to be like, I really feel like you took the time to like understand. And this is so refreshing. Like this is so, and it's like, again, I continue to be shocked by the fact that like other people don't do this in the PR yeah. service, take the time to personalize the email. If you can see on their Twitter that it was their birthday, like say happy belated birthday, like yeah. little things like that, which I think are normal if you're normal. trying to relate to someone. And it's it, like time and time again, like journals will be like, like the, it'll, it'll stand out mm. from the rest because the approach yeah. is different. And it's, and that's what I realized also going and meeting with this journalist. It's like, this is like PR is like, it's a, it's relationship building. It's human connection, which has always been part of our nature. And then it's just c come into the business space and been like, well, like, of course, relationships with people is going to be really important to your business's success, right? Because you're selling to people. And then it yeah. just somewhere along the way it became so corporate and, and it became the strategy where part of the strategy is mm. be human. And it's like, well, yeah, because all this is about is building human connection and relationships. So of course yeah. it's like, what yeah. happened? But it's done in like, I'm thinking about like jazz hands. It is done in <laughs> yeah. the jazz hands way. You yeah. know, it's just like, I remember having, you know, and have like eight meetings a day with different like journalists or PR agencies. And you just feel like, honey. 
yeah. every time they come in it's like hello and yeah. I just like loved it when people. I would get to yeah when you get to that point where it's a journalist that you're used to seeing or an agency that you're used to seeing and it was just so much more genuine you know the connection that we'd have and yeah it um actually, and you can tell yeah you, you can, can tell really when it's tell. genuine and yeah, yeah. Yeah, or when they just have like dollar signs in their eyes, hoping that you'll. But also, either... it also just feels so much better. Mm. Like I'm like yes. instead of it feeling like oh, this is something I have to do and perform. It's like no, I'm literally just gonna go connect with a person, yes. see if what I have to say is interesting to them, understand what is what is interesting to them, what lights them up, what they need help with. Like it's like you know yeah. applying your empathy, like all these things, and then just mm. like seeing if it if it's a match and yeah. just enjoying the opportunity to get to know a person and understand like their view of the world and what mm. interests them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm really curious, like when was that shift for you of, you know, having worked in agency and client side and then deciding, well, I don't know how you decided, but then to <laughs> shift and work for yourself and do it. Was it like you worked on the client or agency side and then decided I want to do this more consciously I'm gonna work for myself or was it like I'm gonna work for myself and then realizing oh actually I want to do this more you know like what came first it was, <laughs> it was much more of a like cosmic redirect I feel like it was like my Saturn return basically okay yeah <laughs> this is how we're kicking it off <laughs> <laughs> say no more <laughs> no, do. we want to hear it all <laughs> um, yeah no I um I headed up PR for this big travel company and I was made redundant um even though I was great at my job my boss wasn't didn't want me to go but there was a big corporate restructure and so it shattered this illusion of like there is such a thing as job stability mm. which was a like that that lesson or learning that when I was 27 like gave has basically given me permission to now do what I'm doing because it basically made me realize like oh it doesn't matter how good you are at your job you can still lose it so you might as well go do the risky thing of what you actually want to do because it's totally a conditioned belief that there is more security in a corporate job than an entrepreneurship like that's just a belief yeah. um it's louder for the people in the back yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean I'm not saying that entrepreneurship is not like risky and unstable it, and all that yes thing, it's something you want to do like it's it yeah the the yeah. having a st stable job like that's that's not that's not a thing yes um and I didn't, I went and did my yoga teacher training. So instead of taking any of the offers I had lined up, like instead of doing what you're supposed to do, my intuition was just really strong and told me to go traveling. And <laughs> the conditioning came in a little bit. Cause I was like, I can justify a yoga teacher training. I can't justify a yoga retreat in a gap. Cause I was like, that that's productive use of my time. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad that I, that that's what happened because my yoga teacher training was really what just awakened so much. I've been practicing for 10 years, but really like fully immersing myself in the yogic way of life and you know I mean it like it it brought my attention to the fact that like I am a conscious person I am like I have this natural self-awareness that really just like gave me more language and and allowed me to really explore that and really understand what truly matters and like the kind of life I want to live and it's like a life of meaning a life of adding value to the world but also a life that feels good and allows me to be in the present and feel good in the present and what I'm sure so many people can relate to if they've been in the corporate world is like it's so like you're just sitting there waiting for the day to end you're waiting for the weekend and I'm like that's the majority of your life and I'd much rather be not knowing what the future holds but enjoying my present <laughs> like and that's I feel like the big shift that's happened so basically ever since I came back from that yoga teacher training. I just was like, I'm not going back into corporate. Like I am not going back to that life. I have no idea what I want, but I'm going to just explore it. And so I came back to London, started teaching and thought that was my path. Realized very quickly that teaching in London, you need to teach like 25 classes a week in order to just like make, make ends meet. And then commuting around London, is like a real energy dream. And I'm a yeah. project, which I know we'll maybe get into later the human design <laughs> thing, but I was like, oh, this is not serving me. Um, and then I worked part-time in an agency um, and, you know, it was like reminded that I'm good at PR. Um, but then I took on this, um, I had an old journalist friend get in touch who runs a feminist travel publication. 
And I started doing some PR on the side for her. And like the contrast of working on these like tech clients and working with this feminist travel publication, I had like five hours a month or something with her. And like, I had like way more hours with the other clients, but it was so easy with the feminist travel publication. I was like, New York times, like Forbes, like it was, and they were all said, Whoa, like you're getting all these amazing pieces. And I'm like, well, because this is, this lights me up. This is so important. This is so easy to talk about. And journalists are like, Oh my God, this is so cool. You know, like, and that's what made me realize like that that's how I can, I, I can, I can add value to the world by taking these PR skills and then combining it with my conscious kind of philosophy on life or embodiment or whatever you want to call it and using it to support the people who are really adding value in the world. And it was like this mm -hmm. kind of weird, like, cause it was not what I expected. Um, but that's kind of how it ended up happening. And then as I started consulting, I then realized that there was this gap that there were all these entrepreneurs who could really benefit from PR, but didn't necessarily have the tools or the cash to spend on an agency. And I also don't think it's necessary because um, a little can go such a long way um, unless you're, you're beginning to be a bigger company um, because press coverage and podcasts, it all compounds over time. Um, and I also realized that I like much prefer like being the advisor and the strategist and the ideas person and the support than the person executing, even though I can execute very well. I think it's like that like that's a zone of excellence thing, but like advising is like zone of genius. And so it's like mm -hmm. giving myself permission to step up into that and letting go of the the execution, which is another unlearning. So that's like mm. long-ish story, short-ish. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Of how, yeah, of how it happened, but it was very like not intentional. It just kind mm. of unfolded. Um, yeah. And do you feel like you had one, one or... Yeah, was there like one breakthrough moment that stands out or was it just like this series of like little things that just... I think it's just series of little mm. things. Like the longer I stay in it, the more I also just like it really cements. Like I'm like, this is what I'm meant to do. And it and it's it. the more I'm in it, the less it's like, I mean, yes, PR, because that's an easy way for people to like click in and understand what I'm doing. But it's, it's so much more about this visibility piece and that internal mm. piece because I realized that's the journey I've been on myself. Like I grew up moving all around the world, um, was a bossy, confident kid, moved around a lot, became really shy because I was in all these different cultures and countries and the new kid. And I, you know, had to really like move through a lot of that as an adult to really allow myself to be seen and to, you know, heal traumas and stuff to, in order to step into that and really be my authentic self. Um, and that's very much the embodiment. And I think working in PR is not a coincidence <laughs> because that's like just furthered that I've literally have therapists be, be like, it's kind of wild given your history that you chose PR, but your soul was like, we are healing this shit in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> like, that's what it, what it's been. Um, and then also being queer, like coming out and like embodying that and expressing that, like it's, it is such a journey of like daring to show up fully as me. Um, and I think that's why it's something that is so close to my heart to do that, to, to be able to hold space for other people to like own their own magic, because that's mm -hmm. always like what excites me about working with people is that I'm like, oh my God, what you're doing is so amazing. And you're helping so many people and you're doing such a good thing for the world. And you just deserve so much recognition for that. And it's like, I'm able to help people realize that and really own like, oh yeah, I am doing something amazing. And I do deserve to have my voice heard because my point of view is important. Like it adds to the conversation. And I think that's, that's really important. Like we need to, we need people who have different opinions and it's okay that they're different opinions, but we need to hear from people who are really doing these things consciously. Um, as opposed to people who are just like, oh, you're asking me about this topic. Yeah. I'm just going to like, I don't know, brain dump a random opinion. I'm not really actually, that I've actually not really thought about, you know? Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, ah. Uh. So <laughs> I I just love that we're able to have this conversation because I, this is what I live for. And I just like, I dream of only working with people who have this, yeah, level of consciousness or who at least like want to be part of this shift and this change. And I say this, 
that is actually the only kind of people I work with so very grateful for that but um yeah it's just music to my ears and to my heart listening to you talk about that yeah. Mm. yeah I think also that's the that's the mirror piece as well though isn't it it's like that's what that's what well I I think we all put out that's the energy we put mm-hmm. out so that's what we attract back so it makes sense that you know those those are the kind of people that we work with and ultimately it's that ripple effect like it's you know um we were actually talking about something recently which really ties into this but it was the idea of um comparison so um as an entrepreneur you know comparisons the thief of joy um and you see all of these people online on social media all of these business owners and they're like um doing all the things they're making all the money they have all the clients and sometimes it's really easy to kind of just fall into that when you're like going against the grain really like on your own path trying to create positive change and um and we were talking about how like how do these people just keep going these business owners just keep going in that way in that hustle and it really just does tie into well they're not conscious entrepreneurs like if you're if you're someone who isn't conscious then you can hustle all the time you can push you can force but I think your story Maria just really demonstrates how when you follow your intuition when you slow down when you connect with yourself it gets to be easier it gets to be fun it gets to light you up and then you get to create that positive change for yourself and for others as well Mm -hmm. yeah yeah no that resonates so much because it is hard because I I also feel like coming into the coaching space like I almost like felt like I dove in and learned the way you're meant to do a coaching run a coaching business Mm -hmm. and then a lot of it didn't sit well with me and I had to kind of unlearn it again I was like, okay, let me come in and learn the rules so that I can break them because I don't, that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. Um, It's just, yeah, it's just taking a a corporate model or a hustle model and putting it onto the coaching space and um, selling it as like the ultimate freedom. When, when I was trying to embody it, it felt like a self-imposed prison. (laughs) I was like, that's not why I did, that's not why I went on this path. Yeah. So it's, it's scary to, to be brave enough to follow your intuition and follow your body signals of like what feels good um, and to trust that it's going to work mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. But what I always come back to is that I'm like, I, the alternative is not an option. Like I would rather yeah. the risk and the uncertainty and it feel like, you know, like you're on the right path than to do something yeah. that you're supposed to do, but it requires you like abandoning parts of yourself. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's almost like in my, how I feel it. It's like, if I need to abandon part of myself, I might as well be working for the quote unquote safe job, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and like not have this like deep personal stuff that moves. I might as well be doing it for someone else. Yeah, because then you can if, be yeah. like, okay, I'm just going to like mindlessly do this and not really invest and pour myself into it because I don't have yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And just like yeah. punch out a few strategies and just mm-hmm. call it a day. You know. yeah. um, I mean, to be fair, sometimes it is tempting. Sometimes you're like, oh, I really Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could just turn off my feelings and sit here and just <laughs> out and pick up a paycheck. Whereas like, I feel like often, a, often a, con- a day in the life of a conscious business owner looks like tapping, movement, dancing it out, shaking it out. Like, I don't know, doing all these things to like shift your yeah. emotional state and then sitting down and creating something really cool. And then you're like, okay, that was, that was my day. That was weird. Um, I'm, I'm laughing because <laughs> Emily and I literally like talk pretty much every day 
And it's just like, it was so much easier when we could just like bypass ourselves and push through something <laughs> and just, and you know, we we had a co-working day on Friday where we were ba- basically just both working, but we had Zoom going at the same time so we could chat, but we were listening to music and we were both like, we we're having just like a silent disco because we were listening to different things and we were just both like, I mean, music has the power to really shift it like yeah. I oh yeah I movement it. music so, yeah it's really like dance it out like after oh. a good tapping when I'm like calling in like the beliefs that I want to believe and the the thoughts or like the feelings I want to feel then like putting on a song to kind of just like embody that it really helps yeah. and I love that you have the freedom to do that I mean I guess you mm, can yeah. do that in an office but it's not the same you can't like get up and like fully I mean you could maybe yeah but, but maybe I mean, not for as long. <laughs> not as long as you like. You can't last it the way that you were. Yeah. Wearing. No. And you get weird looks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you touched on a little bit before, like building your business as a projector. And mm. uh, yeah, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that. Because um, as a reminder, Emily's a projector as well. I'm a money gen. So we function. I mean, if anyone listening is like a projector, I'm sure you probably relate to the feeling of like just how much you need to unlearn in order to truly step into your projector magic. Um, Mm. And I think it's such an experiment. It's such an experiment. And I think, I don't know. I mean, it's ongoing. I'm continuing to experiment with it. Um, And I, I find that one of the important pieces of it is also to really just be mindful of who I talk to about how I run my business because if I'm speaking to a manifesting generator or a generator or even a manifester although with a manifester at least they they, like manifestors kind of understand the need for rest um I think it's really important to safeguard that because if as a projector it's it's normal for us to have a lot of doubt around operating in this way that's so different like not doing as much and not being being measuring our our worth based on how much we're doing and how much we get done but really measuring our worth on our impact and the way we see things and really valuing our energy like our energy is so precious because when we take care of ourselves and are able to like show up in like a in embodied and aligned like our way of seeing things it can be so valuable for people you know it can really shift everything for them and really be supportive we have to really safeguard that energy. And I think what I noticed, at least in the beginning, when I was first operating my business, I like hung out with a lot of generators and manifesting generators. And like, I have no issue. Like, I love, I love people who are, you know, a different aura type, but the way we operate is just so different. And like, sometimes there can be like some judgment and some bitterness or just some like, kind of, it can kind of like amplify the thoughts that you're already having around like, oh, but you should be doing more. You should be making that happen. Or like, really, like you, that you really, you just think you can just do that and that's enough. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't help if you're already kind of new to embodying these beliefs. So it's like, you really need to be mindful. And I think I, I, that's what's been really helpful for me is like really talking to other people who who see me. And a lot of the time that's like actually also other projectors or reflectors who can mirror this stuff back to me and help me like um, really focus on what I do know to be true um, and help me, help me believe it. Because I think, I think, I feel like that's the hardest part. The hardest part is like trusting that this very different way of operating is right and will lead to success. Um, because we're the only type that has success as the marker of alignment also. Um, I didn't realize that. That's really interesting. Yeah. Like I think like generators, like satisfaction, like it, you know, but like projectors are the ones where it's like, if you are in alignment, you will have success because what you are here to do is to guide people to like be efficient and, you know, achieve their highest potential and stuff. And so when you show up as that, you can't help, but be successful. Yeah. Allow yourself to show up as that but it's it's good practice and also to add to that the world that we live in sees success as titles money Mm -hmm. you know and so as projectors I mean well for anyone even 
success means different things to other people but that's why it's such a big unlearning journey um just to echo what you just said it it's yeah everything is an unlearning yeah it's such an unlearning and it's like not judging yourself for needing rest and I I found also like if you're not a projector or a manifester or reflector who needs that rest it can be hard to understand so it's not about like people, you know, having ill intentions, I think because they don't experience it, if you're a manifesting generator generator, you don't experience that like visceral, physical feeling of like, I'm hitting a wall, like, like, it, it feels like such effort to push through. Um, it can be really hard to understand. And that's where it's like, we have to, like, I think a big, a big practice is like, just trusting your internal compass, even when other people don't understand and I think mm -hmm. that is that I think is the visibility piece of being a projector it's like can you trust that internal compass and be the example mm -hmm. and like be the embodiment and it's like you don't have to prove you don't have to justify you just have to do you and show up as you and show up embodying this way of being and that is you being visible and that is what's going to attract people to you as opposed to you being like I'm going to justify all the reasons why this doesn't work for me and the getting all defensive it's like no 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 no. you just have to honor yourself that's it mm. and show up yeah. that way yeah it's really interesting how you you help people and you teach people to be recognized and that as a projector as well is like you know it's that recognition piece we want to be recognized we like to be recognized so now you're yeah you're like really embodying your human design <laughs> thank you I try <laughs> the latest thing I've gotten into which is like I mean a whole other level of is like the um what's it called it's like the, the your strongest sense that mm. is a really interesting because I've spoken to a, a human design reader who's a friend of mine and it's like I think it's in it's environment and strongest sense and then I think digestion yes. and the, it's, it's an interesting one to experiment with mm. um, because it's a way for you to also, if you're feeling like you're out of alignment, like by actually cultivating those pieces, it yes. can help you like be in alignment with your, with your strategy and stuff. So I discovered I'm a Valley mm. person and I just think it's hilarious because I'm like, Oh yeah, Valley girl. Like it just, <laughs> <laughs> that tracks woo girl, like all the things. <laughs> um, but it helped me understand like why certain environments and certain routines I have like yeah. actually switch on my brain and get mm. me into my, my, my magic. Like I go and practice yoga a lot. I teach yoga. I have this beautiful community and that is like a Valley space. Valley. Yes. A Valley is a place mm. where there's an exchange of information. You can observe people. You don't necessarily even need to be interacting, but there's a flow and an exchange of people. And I was like, that's why I love being at the yoga studio so much. I'm like, this is so interesting. Mm. And so now it's like, I can consciously implement that and like set my day up that way. If I really feel like, oh, I really want to like turn my brain on. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and be at the yoga studio. And then I'm going to take time to like put on clothes that make me feel good because my strongest sense is outer vision. So it is about aesthetics. And then I'm going to sit in the sun because my digestion is all about direct daylight or like, yeah, getting daylight. And I'm like, oh, this, and now I feel so good. And I'm like, this mm. is so, it's like literally gives you like a little recipe. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Do you know what Actually, your environment is? Um, I don't. I think, um, is mountains one? Yes. I yeah. think that's mine. Yeah. 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 So it's really interesting that apparently like if you're a valley person and you go into the mountains, like it's like you can't your, your hand-eye coordination go like it's like it really does mess with you energetically and then I guess like vice versa it's really yeah. and the environments are so funny too there's also kitchens that's another one I'm like and cave yeah. like it's like so I'm a cave and it just uh, yeah oh yeah that's right it was just like yep yeah. <laughs> yes, well because I remember yeah. talking about it before yeah 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 oh that makes sense I need that retreat that alone time where no one knows that I'm there and I can just observe things that are going on and I need a lot of quiet alone mm -hmm. space that retreat like the cocoon environment of a cave where there's only like one entrance between me and the world mm. like one portal to get to me is really important because then I can see it 
and like protect it in a way and it's it's so interesting yeah. like yeah. it's like yeah I find it really fascinating you're like yeah. oh it helps me understand how to well I mean I guess and that, that's also what human design is it's like it's your energetic blueprint mm. and it's like this yeah. is the map mm. for you to really be and an have a and yeah. be able to like be your, embody your biggest potential but it's just I think it's really fun to experiment with and so interesting yeah. how we're all yeah. so different also yeah and it's really funny yeah. for me because I'm a manifesting generator but I really resonate and I think maybe it's more like I empathize or I really understand projectors mm. um because that unlearning piece I really resonate with that because the whole like money gen we do like five million different things and yeah, we just need to be to. allowed to do that yeah. and what does the world tell you that you should have like one career and do you know the and especially that's what the world is. yeah it's a that's the world so. yeah <laughs> and it's I mean for me it's even more present in the French culture like I feel like and like Saxon culture they're more open to you having like bit of a funky cv like you should see mine it's just like mm-hmm. <laughs> i change countries jobs like industries but but you know there's a common thread throughout i couldn't get a job in france got mm-hmm. 10 years experience in like really high luxury marketing and all of that they wouldn't even look at my cv because there's too many things listed on there mm-hmm. too many different like experiences yeah and yeah and now i get to you know, there is still parts of me where I'm like, you're doing too many things and then it's not going to work out because you're putting your energy in too many different places. Like that little story, I still hear it sometimes because I have my business in maturation coaching. I have witchy business. I'm the associate in a company like the mentor training where we train people to be mentors and so those are three different things. And then on top of that, I'm going to be working in different industries and I've got other projects on the go. But that is like fully me. That's you, know? you embodying. Yeah, 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 really. And it's just, but you still have that piece that you've got to unlearn because sometimes yeah. I still hear, well, you're doing too many things. You're going to lead yourself to another burnout. Like that's just what's going to happen. So you've got yeah. to be really careful about your energy. And I'm like, no it's about it's about following what feels yeah. good like if it lights mm. you up and it energizes you it excites yeah. you then it's not going to drain you and I think it's mm. even like generators it's the same like I I think I guess all types have something to unlearn like even generators mm. need to unlearn mm. that they to do things out of obligation because that's yeah. what's going to stop their energy I think it's just um I mean this is just something I've read that like projectors and reflectors are the ones that are most conditioned mm. because they're the ones that operate the most like differently in contrast to the way the world operates um because also depending on where you are like in new york when i lived in new york i feel like that is a manifesting generator's paradise like it's like people are doing a million and one thing like if you have like one job it's like people are like oh what do you do like oh i do this full time and then i also like i'm working on a screenplay and also i'm doing this and i'm also doing this and i'm also doing this and i'm also doing this and you're like oh my god i'm super human <laughs> like i just want to go take a nap <laughs> um I'm like I feel like if you could I mean maybe that's something like you could almost like label cities based on their yeah Yeah. that's such an interesting because I think I loved London so much because London was that energy I think big cities yeah yeah Yeah. you can do it all um really multifaceted and maybe that's also um yeah a cultural shift like I also feel Mm. like Gen Z's are not boxing themselves in in the same way to be like I'm gonna be an an artist and an (laughs) actor an author and I'm gonna you know like yeah and we're like yeah go for it like I also want to do many different things and just like I just can't I just have to acknowledge I can't do it all at once you know but But life is gonna do all of these things I have all these ideas but I let go of needing to do them all at once yeah yeah life is really long and we've got so much more time than you know it's not over by the time you turn like it's 30. short and it's long it's like yeah, yeah that's, that's it that's... it's just but the zeds they're something else aren't they <laughs> Emma <laughs> the and i talk about it all the time We're sometimes like... i get I, sometimes this has happened to you i'm like sometimes i can get really jealous and be like oh <gasps> almost yeah <laughs> Like they we are this like so awkward free. in between, yes. like the millennial pause, you know, we're like, wait, is this recording? Oh, hi. <laughs> the fact that Gen Z's have like picked up on that. I'm like, oh my God, we're embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like, I 
love my life and the path and whatever and it wouldn't be what it is if I mm. was not a boy. yes sometimes you're just like you can't help but be like if I had grown up with that like as a queer person mm. if I had grown up with that representation yeah maybe my life would have looked you know maybe I would have come out sooner I don't know like maybe I mean but then again you don't know there could have been yeah something. but yeah and maybe now you do it in a more empowered way because you had mm. to go through some something you know but like but they're part of the change. I think that's, yeah. I guess, the exciting piece. It's like the, I love the way the Gen Z is operating, the way like they're more, con- like they are also more conscious. I think mm. it's a generation. It's like, okay, that's, yeah. we are still seeing the shift and we yes. are, we're going to be part of that even if we are the more, the older, more awkward yeah. <laughs> version. But yeah. in saying oh, that, like <laughs> when you said that, like are they, I'm sure, you know, as a, as a whole there's more they're more conscious but maybe they're more mentally aware but I think they have more self-awareness I mean just like yeah but I'm, self-awareness I, I being like on a like, mental level like whereas there's like the embodiment piece yeah. I almost feel like and I'm gonna get cancelled for saying this um, <laughs> they're too young you know you need to have well, life think, experience think, there's think, something about life experience to be more embodied no, in yourself be, I think it's one thing to be aware it's another thing to actually, I guess, have the time and the experiences to like yeah. embody and heal and all these things. Yeah. But I do think, but like the awareness piece and having the vocabulary. Yes. You know, like the fact that mental health is like so talked about, like mm-hmm. better communication, like just there's just all this vocabulary that wasn't there before. And yeah. even just like in the queer space, like there's, it's, you know, like, there's still so many issues and like mm. LGBT rights are under real threat. Like in the U S it's like not good, but like the one thing that's different is that if you are in an environment that's not queer friendly and whatever, it's like you have, like there's TikTok, there's like, there's mm-hmm. places you can go where you can see people living their truth. And I just, mm-hmm. I have so much compassion for my younger closeted self. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, if I had seen that, even if I, even if I didn't come out, but I would have been able to come out to myself. Yeah. you know like I would have been able to see that representation and it's like that's I mean that's another layer to like why I'm so passionate about authentic yeah. disability because like mm. it cannot be understate like o- like overstated how important representation is and like yes especially in a queer context because you don't know like if you're having all these feelings that are like not in alignment and it's like you almost it's it's really easy to gaslight yourself and just be like, well, I can, I can kind of function this way. Like it depends on how loud that voice is, but it's like, once you actually see someone living what you have been feeling and you just didn't have the knowledge or the like vocabulary to be like, Oh wait, that's an option. I can, that's, that's who I am. That's me. Like, it's so, I don't know. Like I can get so emotional thinking about it. Like, it's just, it's so, so powerful. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I think like it's that layer of like showing up authentically and it's, mm-hmm. it's cliche to say like you give other people permission but you do but you do you really do yeah. like there are people who are going to judge there are people who are going to think you're cringe those people chances are that they're hold chances are that they're judging you because they're not showing up authentically yes. yeah whereas people who are will just celebrate you and most of the time people will just be like wow this is like inspiring me to also embrace all of who I am including the cringe and the awkward and all the things because it's human yeah Yeah. even just that as a lesson like if people are gonna judge you and you know that's it's a projection of them like all of that I feel like I see so much of that online especially on love TikTok (laughs) um but there's so many lessons there's so much education around that and if like yeah you know like if if those lessons were things that is that self-awareness it's just yeah it's you know um being able to accept yourself for who you are and then sharing that or not like you know it's um comes back to being authentic and then just following you know where you want to go but um yeah I could like ramble on about this for yeah. A yeah, but really it's like- long time. But it, and, and it's not yeah and it's it's not like a strategy it's not something you're like I'm gonna go and do and be it's like no it's it's a it's a practice of being yeah. and, mm-hmm. and it's an ongoing exploration and you're also always becoming so like your part of being authentic is also like allowing yourself to change your mind allowing yourself to like 
have a different opinion and like all the things. And I think that's what I'm also like unlearning a little bit with PR, mm -hmm. whereas PR can be very like, these are the messages and this is what you stand for. And this is what we are calling you. And I'm, the more I'm in the space, the more I'm like, no, like we can, it can be fluid. Like as long as we've mm -hmm. taken the time to really get at the core, it can naturally evolve. And like, I'm an example, right? I started out as like PR coach, you know, cause I was still like, I'm going to take my corporate and put it into a, an entrepreneur box, you know? Yeah. And then the more I've been on this journey, the more I'm like, no, I'm like the yogi, I'm the healer, I'm the you know, all of these things. Um, but it's all the same thread. Like the mission has mm -hmm. remained the same. The impact has remained the same. It's just the the terminology has evolved to be even more accurate, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been such a nice chat. Yeah. I feel like we just keep talking. I know. <laughs> yes. I always mm, yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you would like to talk about that we haven't um, brought up? I don't know. I mean, I feel like we've talked about so many, so many yeah. interesting things. Um, I mean, the conversation really didn't go there in terms of like more strategy PR stuff. But for anyone who is listening to this and is like, well, practically, how does this PR thing work? And <laughs> what's Get what's the point what's the point of like investing in it beyond the like mm. feeling piece and all that stuff um I I guess I do want to just say that like the reason why it is really impactful to invest in learning how to um be seen in the right places like land press do podcasts things like that is that it really one it really builds your credibility like it's this instant way for people to buy into you you know, if like they go onto your website and they see, oh, as seen in like, I don't know, Cosmopolitan or Glamour or whatever. It's just a, it's just a way to get people to buy into you faster. Um, and also it's an, it's a way to reach a bigger audience without having to churn out social media content all the time. You know, like mm -hmm. this episode that you're listening to will be available and it's discoverable and it it's, we record it and that's it. That's all the, that's all the, that's the energy it takes to, to put yeah. in to create it. Um, but people can continue to discover it long after um, yeah. it's been recorded. And so it's it's a way to like invest your energy into something that is going to continue making you discover, be discoverable. And um, over time, it kind of just compounds because you start being visible in all these different places and then you start getting more invitations and it really just builds on itself in the way, in a way that social media can't really replicate mm -hmm. social media post just has a shorter lifetime. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it requires more like maintenance. Um, and that's what I love about PR because I mean, as a projector, I need my rest. I need to take my time off. So it's like a nice thing. He's like, you can go and record a podcast and then you can take whatever time you need off and you're maybe not so consistent on social media, but that podcast episode is still going to drop during that time. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, you can invest your energy when you do have it into these, um, this like into exposure, and then it's going to continue working for you when you're not, when you're not working, which I'm all, I'm here for that. We don't need to be burning ourselves into the ground. So, you know, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. So that was a great <laughs> explanation. <laughs> yes. Love it. Yes. Um, um, where can people find you if, they want to work you can find me on on instagram um love love posting to stories if you want behind the scenes of my life that's that's where i share all my like random thoughts and um lisbon life updates um so mm, I, I love your lisbon life updates <laughs> so um, i'm at the conscious pr um and i'm also at maria.eilerson and that's my personal account um which is like more yoga and tapping focused but inevitably they bleed into each other um, and then my website is beconsciouspr.com. It is under construction. So it's going to be shifting a lot soon, which is very exciting. Um, and what else? Um, I mean, I always love, I always love hearing from people. If you are someone who sends voices messages, that's like straight to my heart. So if you want to like share your thoughts on this conversation or just say, hi, please, please send me a DM. I love, I love hearing from people. I love connecting with people. Um, and if you're interested in learning about PR, I am launching my group program soon, and that's going to oh, nice. take you through all the, all the elements of, um, of conscious PR, um, in a, in a group container, um, which is really special. So if you're interested in that, there's a, 
there's a wait list, which I'm sure I can share. Yeah, yeah, we will link everything yeah. in the show notes. That way will be easy access. Love easy access. <laughs> yeah. Just one click away. Amazing. Amazing. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really Thank enjoyed you. the conversation. Yeah, it was really cool. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to your weekly dose of witchy business. If you love us as much as we love us, please leave a five-star review to help us spread the magic. Thank you again to our sponsor, Plan Her. Please support them the way they support us. And don't forget to follow the link in the show notes to sign up to our Substack. You can also watch us on YouTube. It's at Witchy Business. And you can also follow us on Instagram at We Are Witchy Business. Emily is at underscore Emily Tyson and I am at Anna.Jordan with an E.